okay, there are many graphical things described in the following video, but I think they need to be addressed. And before we start to actually talk about Andrew Tate, I think there's some things you need to understand for it to really make sense. Viewer discretion is advised, and I'll leave a timestamp for the Tate part below. A lot of people fail to understand how coercion happens. And I would recommend you watch this podcast where a survivor of sex trafficking for porn told her story, how she was led under false pretense of modeling, uh, led to an isolated location, had her phone taken away from her, and then trapped in a room with three other men far stronger than her, and forced to sign contracts and basically do things she didn't want to do. That's all I'm going to say. You see, human trafficking isn't necessarily Somalian kids in a fucking shipping trailer. It's not the movie Taken, okay? The reason it's so scary is because it could be happening right next door, okay? It looks extremely fucking consensual and clean, which is what makes it very scary. Your neighbor could be a trafficker and you won't even fucking know, okay? You see, you can force someone to do something or you can take away their ability to say no and get them to pretend like they want to do it, right? You can force consent. You understand what I mean? Which is often what happens a lot of times. And this is why it is so hard to prosecute. The criminals make the act look clean. They force people to sign contracts and they make evidence against them. They force them to act like they like it. And then another part of the reason a lot of this goes unprosecuted is because fighting and coming out about things like sexual assault or whatever often ruins people's reputations. This is why victims often keep quiet about it. Some people will not want to be their friends. Some people will not believe them. Some people will not want to date them. And sadly, many people will blame them. This is a large part of the reason victims also blame themselves. It is this stigma that keeps victims silent. It stops them from becoming survivors. And this is also part of the reason people never get prosecuted for this. You see, proving this in court is very difficult due to coercion and fabricated evidence. Along with things like victim blaming, it becomes virtually impossible. Now, I hope you understand why, why victims of sexual assault keep quiet about their stuff. Evidence can be fabricated through coercion. When used against the victim, it can break them down to the point where they actually start to believe it. And this is why criminals get away again and again and again. And see, I'm not trying to prosecute Andrew Tate here. That is not my job. That's the job of the Romanian authorities, okay? <clears throat> but however, in my personal opinion, I do believe he did something very fucked up. And let's just say you had a hypothetical daughter. She was good with her studies. She was an athlete. She never partied or did anything degenerate. She was raised right, right? Yeah, I mean, she was raised by you, of course, and it's hypothetical. But a month after she turns 18, one month into her university, she wants to move to Romania and get married to this mysterious man called Andrew Tate. And she told you that, oh, he's, he's a very nice man. He, he, he produces content online. You Google his content and you see things like this. Would you let your hypothetical daughter go to Romania and marry this man? I don't think Andrew Tate will be prosecuted for anything. I don't I think he'll get away with whatever he's done. And after that, he will become invincible. And all the work the survivors of the girls do porn trafficking case did will virtually be erased. Will be set back again. This culture of victim blaming and whatnot will get even worse. No, no, no. Andrew Day has multiple videos where he discusses how to lure women in. He has written a book where he brags, okay, fucking brags about emotionally manipulating women and abusing women to do cam work for him. This guy is a fucking pimp, not a masculinity slash traditionalist leader of traditional beliefs and religion or whatever the fuck he wants you to believe. He brags about owning multiple casinos and frauding women. Yeah. Yeah. He's written a book about this and he's made a university course about this online. And so this is where he discusses how to emotionally manipulate women into giving him money and coercing them into doing cam work and giving him all the money. And he also admits to stealing and frauding the women he has worked with. Webcam company, people assume, oh, it's just a sex fest. But in reality, it's a shitload of people management. The HR category of the webcam business is, is the largest. Your goal is to inspire a girl to make money. So the way you're going to do that is you have to have some element of influence and you can have that element of influence through her respecting you, looking up to you and her believing she needs you. And this is by saying oh tax to take a bigger cut of the money and control your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. So you don't need to pay tax to anybody. Tell your girl that you're paying the tax. Now that allows you to do two things. One, there's another control element. I work with all percentage. So I can give my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they make, I give them three. And I keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. So you're he made a university teaching other men how to do the same thing. You see, this is the context of the fucking clips I have shown. An online university course where he teaches you how to be a pin. And guess what? The context actually makes it worse. So to all those people saying, oh, Andrew Tate is misunderstood. You have to look at the context. 
eat shit. Okay, this is the context and the context makes it worse. Pull your head out of your ass and stop defending this man. He's a piece of shit. Oh, I don't want to do that. It's okay, I know you want to do that, but listen. Tom wants to meet you. Let's just talk about it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Fine. Let me explain it to you properly. In fact, I'll bring one of the girls who works for me. You, your bottom bitch, the new girl, go out for fucking nice dinner. Your bottom bitch is the one who does the setting. You don't do the setting. The girl has to hear from the girl. And this is why bottom bitch be trained. That's why it's so important to have a good first. It, it makes me sick to my fucking stomach when sycophants turn a blind eye to all this shit and they frame Kate as this misunderstood genius. And I'll admit he makes jokes. See, I'll play a clip of him making a joke. And we'll be millionaires. Shut the fuck up. You know, women are the chick. You see, notice the difference in tone. I understand that this man makes jokes and sometimes he is funny, but he is a man who owns casinos, bribes officials to keep it open during the pandemic, and then he says the pandemic is fake because it's forcing him to close casinos, the people dead be damned, and then Andrew Tate will brag about being a pimp and having many women, and then he will convert to Islam and then pretend to defend traditional values of marriage. If Allah was real, Andrew Tate is going to hell. He will not be getting the 72 virgins the book talks about. If Jesus was real and the Christian God was real, Andrew Tate would be going to hell because he literally promotes two of the seven deadly sins, greed and lust. That is what his channel is about. Consumers greed, supercars, and lust. The 17 whores. Okay, 17 bitches, 40 supercars. Andrew Tate is a child. He's not a man. He's a child who wants to be above the rules. He is what a 14-year-old thinks a man is supposed to be. That's why he brags about moving to a country that is corrupt, right? Men, if anything, in traditional senses, would be bound by rules, standards, and virtue. They would uphold these rules and not try to rise above them or whatever the fuck. Don't let Tate convince you that he's a fucking net positive. Actions speak louder than words, which is something Andrew Tate's father didn't teach him because his father left his ass to play fucking board games. This persona Tate created, the way he acts on camera and the things he promotes, promotes are all bullshit. Don't let one clip of him saying, my discipline, my marriage, throw you off. He isn't an ally to religion or tradition. It is a grift so he can make more money and get more people to sign up to his fucking hustlers university. And on another note, Tate's advice is fucking trash, okay? Exercising is one thing, but then telling people they need 40 supercars to be happy is another thing. Anyone who tells you you need to be in the top 1% of men to be happy or content in life is just trying to pander to your need for luxury. You see, most rich people try to hide their wealth and value things such as human connection. They don't really care about the money as much. Andrew Tate is appealing to brokies by marketing a lifestyle 99% of you will not be able to experience. This is why he's always flexing women, supercars, or some materialistic or hedonistic thing, okay? He is just picking on insecurity and saying you will make it to the top 1% so he can sell you a Sigma male course and make more money. If someone is telling you how to be in the top 1%, by definition, only 1% of you are going to make it. The men who follow Andrew Tate literally sound like the 30-year-olds past their prime who want to marry a six-figure dude and they believe they'll find the six-figure dude because um, um, they're, they're special. They're the same women these men mock all the time. They, are literally, they literally have the same mentality as these women. But instead of finding someone with money, they think they're going to be the one who makes the money. This, by definition, is shit advice. So stop jerking off to the Sigma male shorts where Andrew Tate says some bullshit with the music in the background playing, okay? Just because he mixes in some nuggets of truth and tells you to exercise doesn't mean this guy gives a fuck about anything. Exercise and discipline is good. Yes, social media is bad. Hedonistic consumption is bad. 40 supercars and 17 bitches, prioritizing that in your life is not virtue and it will not make you happy. And okay, this is the final conclusion wrap up on. Andrew Tate is not a net positive. He just wants to make money and he is capitalizing on male loneliness, male dissatisfaction, and male insecurity to do so, which is really scumbag tier. This man is never going to fix the economic systems or make society better. He claims to be religious but then promotes two of the seven deadly sins. He owns cam websites and casinos. This man isn't someone who's going to, this man is not someone who you're going to let your hypothetical daughter marry or your hypothetical son be mentored by. You understand what I mean? Stop supporting all the bullshit he does with retarded excuses like my context, my, my traditional values. He says he loves women. If he loves women so much, why the fuck would he fraud them? Why would he steal from them? Why would he lie to them about taxes? Why would he emotionally abuse them by throwing lever parties and fear them into working for him? This man steals from the people he works with, brags about it, and then brags about corruption, and then brags about fucking loss of women. Stop praising this asshole and see him for who he really is. Alright, that's all I got. 
Call me a soy boy in the comments. Make fun of my penis size and call me a brokey. It's cool. Thank you for watching this video and please do something with your fucking life instead of jerking off to Sigma Mill shorts all day. Thank you for watching. Bye.